Hello, Chaotic Talk here. Welcome back to another Legacy video. Today we're going to be looking at Mono White Prism. Alright, so we previously played through a deck with Soldier Stompy. This one's a little bit different. We're going a bit higher up and we're doing, we're really lock, looking to lock our opponents out more. Alright, so let's take a look at the mana base first and that's going to inform the rest of the deck. Uh, if you're not interested in the deck list, uh, we have uh, time codes in the description. Skip to the match one if you'd like. Alright, so mana base, we're looking at Ancient Tombs to ramp out our stuff. We don't have City of Traders, interestingly. We do run four Ancient Tombs to get our two drops down early. Then we have two Igonjos, three Caracas, uh, five Plains, five Plains, and four Wasteland. Um, I think we should be fine with the mana base. Uh, in some testing, it's been a little bit hard sometimes to cast our double white spells, like our Cord Grace or our Palace Jailer. I think it'll be okay. All right, we have Chrome Mox for additional white mana. And then we're looking at our creatures from then on, right? We got Th Thalia Guard Guardian of Thraven to lock them, our opponents out from non-creature spells for at least a turn. We're looking at Thalia Heretic Cathar as well as Archon of Emyria to stop our opponents from being able to play their non-lands. Right? Archon of Emyria, absolutely great. Love it. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. Non-basic lands your opponents control under the battlefield tapped. That shuts down a lot of things. If, you, if a fetch land comes into play tapped, it's a lot worse, especially if also it can only fetch a tapped uh, non-basic, right? Then we have Anointed Peacekeeper. This is a new one to the deck that kind of has been pushing this through, right? So it's a 3-3 three, three Vigilance for 3. And when it enters the battlefield, look at the opponent's hand and choose any card name. Spells your opponent's cast with the chosen name cost 2 more to cast, and activated abilities of sources with the chosen name cost 2 more to activate unless they're mana abilities. All right, this card is actually, I've been liking it a lot. You don't have to name a card you see, so you can always name, like, if they have Wasteland or they have some land, you can name that. It would cost two more mana. Or, let's say we run into Minsk and Boo. This makes Minsk and Boo cost two more to cast and then cost two more to activate, making it, like, eight mana just to get their 4-4. Four, four. Pretty good. All right, in the four drop slot, we're looking at four of Palace Jailer. Enters Battlefield, you become the Monarch. And when it enters Battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until the opponent becomes the Monarch. Pretty good, I've been liking it. It's good removal, it's good card advantage, and once we start accruing value as the Monarch, if our opponents can't take it back, it really snowballs. All right, then we're looking at Court of Grace. Similar thing, we become the Monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep though, you create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying, but if you're the Monarch, you create a 4-4 four, four angel instead. All right, that one can end the game pretty quickly. Uh, for removal, we have Solitudes. Again, we're not gonna be running source splashers, but I'll get to why in a moment. Then we have Timeless Dragon to cycle and then to create an uncounterable 4-4 flyer if we need to. Right. We also have Emiria's Call for lands. I'm, I'm kind of iffy on these. Like the, so I think like the advantage of this I haven't taken into account last time I talked about it was that these pitch to Crow Mox when a, when a uh, normal land wouldn't. It allows you to get to 3 mana turn 1 or 2 mana turn 1 a little bit better. But I think that's the value here, not casting them. I'd like to make a retraction that I made pre on what I said previously. All right, and then the star of the show, Chalice of the Void. Chalice on one locks out so many decks that I am tempted to mulligan to it every time I can. We're not going to, but it's tempting. All right, uh, look at the sideboard, though. We have suppression fields and for uh, matchups that have uh, more activated abilities. We're looking at temporary lockdown for removal. Uh, exile each non permanent with mana value two or less until it leaves the battlefield. We're looking at four March of Otherworldly Light for extra removal. And then four Leyline of the Voids to the Graveyard. I think I've been on record pretty much that I like Leyline of the Void the most for Graveyard Hate at the moment. Um, again, this is a 5-0 decklist from Zigabadi. As I believe I'm, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm really pumped to try this out. Let's hop into the league, see how it goes. All right, and we're here for match one. So we do have two mana on turn one, but we are on the draw. So two mana, we can play Chalice on turn one. We have... Uh, we have um, Core of Grace, Palace Jailer's late game, as well as Annoying Peacekeeper. I think we'll keep it, right? Like, I, Chalice is kind of the best thing a deck can do, in my opinion, at the moment. Okay, so Flood Strand with nothing. So I think what we'll do is we'll go start with Chromox, pitching probably Core of Grace, and then we can do the Paracus, play the wait, Chalice. And Chalice is good. All right, casting Chalice, let's see if we have enough. No, nothing from the opponent. Okay, that's sticking. That's very good for us to have Chalice stick. Our right, opponent plays a Prismatic Vista and passes. So we're looking at some sort of basic or deck that relies on basics. That's interesting. Let's actually take a look at our opponent's hand then. Annoyed Peacekeeper on the stack. That did get the Force of Will. Okay. We'll just let that go. That got the Force of Will. 
let's see what they have and right, nothing else on my turn it looks like that's fine by me island confirmed this probably grabs another island or it probably grabs a planes okay so there's some sort of blue white deck is a stoneforge mystic that could be an issue for us prismatic ending instead okay we can't deal with that we'll let it go around our turn i'm thinking we're playing but i think we're playing unprotected palace jailer just to get the monarch and also this is another thing that uh, another value to Amiri's call this one isn't uh, distinct to this deck as this i didn't have solitude in the previous deck list but Amiri's call pitches to solitude right draw for the monarch trigger and what do we get we get stifled maybe wait that actually could happen oh no <laughs> um oh uh, they're gonna swords us that's fine what do we draw for turn we draw planes so on our turn we can play solitude we'll have to see okay our opponent plays ponder so we're looking at a blue white deck i'm trying to think like there's a blue white stoneforge deck that's floating around maybe it's that I would, I would assume so honestly i would assume there's a stoneforge mystic coming eventually okay narset's not great but at least it's not like it's not the most threatening to our deck we're not drawing cards per, per se oh wait, yeah we are it really shuts down <laughs> it really shuts down the monarch like what are we looking to draw not really that so we could Chrome Mox pitch in Amiri's Call, Wasteland a Tundra. They revealed a Ponder. And we have a Ponder. So I'm just trying to think. Like we could Wasteland them, cast Solitude on their end step to attack Narset. Sure, let's try that. So we're doing this. We have Wasteland plus five mana if we do this. Okay, they let it go. And then we will hit them with the Wasteland. Drop Amiri's Call. Cool. All right, let's see what they have for us on their turn. Right, so we have the monarch trigger, but we can't actually draw a card because of Narset. They choose to ponder, makes sense. All right, ponder resolves, they do, 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 do. Sorry, draw a card, they did, they chose not to shuffle the library, pondered, played the Scalding Tar, and now they're going to Narset. Let's see what they get from the Narset. They got Teferi Time Raveler, that makes sense. So I'm just gonna clear off that Narset. I could probably clear off the Teferi too, I assume that's what's coming here. This means, ooh, this is annoying. Because they play Teferi, what we have to do is flash in Solitude if we want to hit anything. Oh, sorry, tap the mic. So we can flash in Solitude, they can then bounce Solitude. The alternative though is they're going to bounce a Chrome Mox. All right, might as well flash it in. These keeps us all our mana under us. Love the art. I actually opened uh, one of these when I when I Modern Horizons came out. Uh, no, we don't need to exile anything. Okay. All right, and they bounce the Solitude just like we expected they would. Again, we had to do that because otherwise they bounce. Like Chromox, we loot, we go down a card, we lose a mana that we need to recast Solitude. Archon of Emiria. I think I might like that more than Solitude. That's like, that's an issue for them. Okay, sure. We can't do anything about this turn. We can't draw a card still. The next turn we can kill one of these guys, probably Narset, so we can draw a card off the Monarch Trigger. All right, Teferi activation goes off. And then they just pass. Ooh. So we have the other Thalia. So we're going to start by attacking Narset. See if they have a response. All right, this gives us some card advantage, hopefully. They do have a response of some kind, and it's the Wandering Emperor. Ooh. Okay. So we didn't have a, an answer to that specifically. So now they get to exile this. And now we're facing down three... Um, Ooh. Okay, so I guess we'll just put in Thalia then. All right, 3-2 with first strike compared to 3-2 lifelinker because this we can't flash in due to Teferi. So we'll just put in Thalia. Hope that can slow down the opponents. Can't draw again still. And we need to kill... Ooh, any of these, really. My mind is telling me the bigger threat is probably... Ooh. The Narset... If we kill Narset, we start drawing more cards. Wandering Emperor becomes a bigger issue if the longer it sticks around because it starts to make creatures which then start to interfere with us. All right, another thing coming in. What's this? Prismatic ending on Thalia. Okay. Hmm. All right, after Thalia, they play Scalding Tarn. That's fine by me. The issue is now that we are kind of losing to their value. Uh, Tomb doesn't do anything. We don't have anything that requires us to hold it in hand, though. And I guess we could conceivably draw Emiria. We're going to put out a Solitude here as a attacker for next turn. Uh, this means they either have to bounce it with Teferi or answer it some other way. Okay, again, we can't exile anything. We 
I guess we'll just pass until our turn because we will not have any responses possible. Again, beautiful art on this um, this solitude. I love it so much. Our right, opponent goes for a brainstorm. I assume this will then be followed by fetching with scalding tarn, so they get to shape their hand to finish off the game. I would say I don't believe we're favored anymore. I'm trying to think, like what our what is our out? Oh no, they go. They fetch mystic sanctuary game back. Swords to plowshares. Okay. Hmm. Not great. So they don't have a win condition at the moment. That's the good thing. I guess they well, I guess they can make a two two. <laughs> with it gains first strike. Oh, two two with vigilance. Okay. I was like two two with first strike. No, it gains first strike on returns, they give it a counter. They do make it two two, so now they have a threat on board. So once they have the monarchy. Yeah, so if they become the monarch, then we're really dealing with an issue, so we'll have to I'll play it out for a bit because I think um, it's possible that they could lose on time, or sorry, not lose on time, but we could pull ahead on clock. Uh, the issue is I am commentating this game, which means that I am by nature going to play slower. Uh, I'll try to quickly do that in order to get through any more time, get an advantage there, or at least not lose an advantage in time. But I do believe they're going to finish out the game within the next few turns. There are a few things we could draw. Um, we'll have to see what they are. And that's one of them. So this will make us this will gain us the monarchy and get rid of the samurai token. Unless they have a counter spell. They don't have a counter spell for sure, they do have brainstorm. Uh either way, this is going to go until we want to yield to Archer. So do they have the counter? No. And the monarch exile the samurai. Now they have the wandering Nepper to make another samurai, which is a different issue, and they just have a swords as well. Okay. That didn't quite work out what we needed it to. So I think what we should start doing is thinking about what we need for our sideboard. So if we look at our sideboard, uh, suppression fields seem very interesting as a way to shut down planeswalkers. Uh, these exile everything with mana value two or less. So that gets rid of tokens. It doesn't get rid of any of the planeswalkers. So suppression fields coming in. Uh, March for otherworldly lights might come in. Uh, artifact creature enchantment. Never mind. They don't hit the actual things we're dealing with. The suppression field's definitely coming in, though. There's no reason I should tap Ancient Tomb there. We'll play Court of Grace here. All right, so we bring in suppression fields to stop their Planeswalkers as best we can. And we'll try to see if we can pull back in the next two match or games. Um, one other note, uh, just for general video quality. Uh, Imagine Online just migrated their servers, or their entire companies, basically. So I had to... Uh, Uninstall and then install the new client for MTGO. Uh, so if things are looking off, I'm still tweaking with how things are looking. I think there's a little few things, like if you can see, like things are going under a few things. I guess we have a a, a scroll now. That's odd. Uh, I might. That's about as small as I can make it. We might tr uh, try changing the the size of the viewer between matches. Okay, play an ancient tomb. Yeah, that's just a little too small. Uh, wait, sorry, we will yield my turn while I do this. Okay, our opponent ponders. Uh, they do have a shark time to food in place, so I forgot to mention that. Uh, shark typhoon in place, so now they have a way to close out the game quickly. We could have assumed they have shark typhoon just based on this deck. I do not like the display settings. That's much better. I'm going to have to really work at things. We might be turning off the, we're going to be turning off the chat log, game log for now. Jace coming in. So now they have Jace, they have everything. I'm willing to concede on this one. Okay. Concede there. Let's start looking at the deck list, what we want to bring in, right? We said bring in the suppression fields. We're not really looking to bring in any of the marches. Because the we're never gonna get like that only really gets like some of their creatures. Like they have small creatures that we can already like we could bring in, right? We could ditch we could ditch palace jailers, bring in marches, or I guess bring in a march, and then we say that our monarchy is court of grace. Because, like, what are we exiling with uh, the march? Right? Like, or, sorry, what are we exiling with jailer? We didn't really, all we exiled with it was um, tokens. So we could bring in marches and say, okay, marches will be our answer to those, and court of grace will be how we get the monarch. Um, I'm willing to try it like that. Let's test it like that. I'm going to see how it goes. All right, and we are back. I will play first. Um, this hand has turn. Like, we can curve Annoying Peacekeeper and Annoying Peacekeeper. Shut down some Planeswalkers that way. 
I think I'm willing to try that. So I'm going to keep this. Turn one, we're going to play the Emiria's Call, I guess. Oh, yeah, just play that as a land because we don't need to shock it in yet. And this keeps our other lands free in the future. Right, this means we don't have to bolt ourselves for our lands later on if it becomes necessary or important. All right, let's start with the Peacekeeper. And next turn, we will figure out between Peacekeeper and Court of Grace. This might get a force. I would, ex I kind of expected this would get countered here. It doesn't. They have the force in hand, though. Interesting. So hear me out. This can make any of these more expensive to cast. Or I can just say, good luck. You're not allowed to, ca to crack the Scalding Tarn. And I think I kind of like that one. Yeah, we're going to name Scalding Tarn. Because they don't have... They don't have any cantrips in hand that they can cast off their prismatic vista. This shuts down express iteration. It, it leaves a lot of stuff stuck in their hand and gives us a 3 3 on the board. And it will pop out their hand so I can explain exactly what I mean. All right, they have prismatic vista here, but unless they can get another land, they can't actually use scalding tarn. So we can go. We can now go just second peacekeeper. Yeah, let's do second peacekeeper. I think they'll probably crack prismatic vista this time, or they'll. Force this. They choose to force this one. That makes sense. So that was force pitching force. We'll hit him for three. And then next turn we're looking at maybe. I guess that was force pitching force. We know they played prismatic vista. Let's see if we can if they just don't hit the land. Uh, oh, <laughs> ooh, that feels good. See, that, that that was a play on my part to do that. So we can suppression field and chalice this turn. Yeah. I guess we should might as well keep that open. Let's start with Suppression Field as the bait spell. Because we already have Scalding Tarn Straw. They'll probably have to fetch with Prismatic Vista here. They do. They do have to fetch with Vista here. Okay. And they force it. Pitching EI. Okay. Uh, let's go Chalice on one. And now we're really kind of... So they might have... They didn't have a Swords to take out the Anointed Peacekeeper. Now we are... Kind of the beatdown, right? They have one mana. They can't swords us, and they're stuck with those two tarns doing nothing. Ooh, and they pack it up to that. All right, let's 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 try to do that again. All right, I don't think we make any changes on our sideboarding. Um, we didn't see anything that makes me concerned. I don't think I want to change like anything to like draw play. Like Obviously, Chalice is a little bit worse later, as the Suppression Field and... Um, the annoyed peacekeeper, but I think that's something we just have to accept. So this hand has Archon and Thalia. I like it. Like Archon shuts down their fetch lands, which we know they're reliant on as well. Like they are a three color mana base. I'm willing to keep this. Okay, they decide to fetch immediately for some reason. I'll probably ponder. <laughs> I was hoping I'd put the fear of God in them. So best draw here is Chrome Mox or uh, Chalice of the Void. Mm, that one's fine. We'll play Planes just in case they have. Uh, we didn't see any wasteland, but it's not impossible. And next turn we'll go Archon of Emiria. Okay, Tarn. They do. They choose to ponder. Okay, because I was gonna say they have Brainstorm. That Tarn is a little bit better. Uh, obviously, it's fine. Uh, they will most likely fetch when we, in response to the Archon, at least. Yeah, it looks like that will be what happens. Ooh, we're gonna go Archon here because now next turn what you can do. Next turn we can go Chalice and Thalia. I guess there was an argument that we should have gone Thalia here then. Mm, I think Archon just does so much more, honestly. Archons just feel so strong in these types of matchups where their their land base is a little bit greedy on fetch lands, so they really need to fetch like their non-basics and play their fetch lands. Okay. And this gives us an extra we can do Thalia into Chalice. They don't have Bolt. Oh, they really don't have Bolt. Okay. So Archon is stuck around for at least into their turn. So they have EI, but they only get EI. Interesting. Okay, they play a basic planes. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cast, uh, we're gonna cast regular Thalia. Then that gives us, um, so that puts, so we cast regular Thalia, then they can't force of will the Chalice of the Void. Thalia comes in. All right, so they wanna force this, they can't force Chalice. Um, I guess they could force Chalice now. We're just going to accept that as a play they might make. Oh, wait. All right, we can't play Chalice because we have Archon. Is each player can't play more, more than one spell each turn, not one non-creature spell each turn. <laughs> no mistake on my part there. That's fine by me. Um, 
next turn we can either do Chalice or we can do the Big Thalia as just another redundancy against their lands. Uh, not particularly as useful. Sorry. Big Thalia isn't as useful as uh, Chalice, I don't think, because we have Archon. Now Big Thalia is more interesting to me. Uh, they could play something here. They, they have the ability to play a one-drop spell here because they have Thalia. So what could this be? This could either be Ponder or a Swords Plowshares. Swords Plowshares. Uh, it is Prismatic Engine instead. Gotcha. So we're going to start... We have five mana. I'm trying to think because we can go Thalia and then Chalice, and that stops the first. So we'll do that. Right? We'll do Thalia and then Chalice in order to stop any possible um, Force of Will that could go on Chalice. Ooh, Chalice was pretty easy to cast under Thalia. That's cool. Okay. Uh, this is drop, blocking out their one drops, and we have uh, everything else a little bit more expensive. We are scared of Planeswalkers, like whatever this is. So this is going to be Teferi bouncing probably Thalia. Teferi bounces Thalia. It's fine. We might go... Ooh, that's even better. We'll probably this turn go double Thalia. We'll go... Start with with Little Thalia, and then we'll go Big Thalia. Again, this is just making their Force of Wills a little bit more awkward. They do have the first Force. Okay. And then Big Thalia. That resolves. Cool. Then this can put pressure on Teferi on our turn, or on our next turn. And then we have removal. So we have March of Other World Light for removal if they play a creature. Or we have Timeless Dragon, uh, either to hard cast or as a uh, cycle. Probably hard cast at this point i would say all right nothing from them here Ooh. so let's let's hit teferi we have a first striker which makes this even stronger okay teferi's gone now we need to make a choice do we want to go timeless dragon cycle or so we can cycle play land and then eternalize it or we can just hard cast as a five five um let's see so i gotta do some quick math so as a five five we're attacking Eight next turn, eight the turn after. As a four four attacking seven and seven, so the clock doesn't change. So I'm willing to cycle. Yeah, the amount of life life loss is the same as well. Cycle, grab a basic planes probably, or the nice looking one, and now we'll eternalize. Okay, right, and this uh, costs the same amount of life, leaves us with another land in play, so we don't have to keep tapping ancient tomb, and it also gives keeps the same clock. Our opponent does have something. They have a wear. All right, Chalice of the Void is out. Probably means Sword Supply shares of some kind here as well. Containment Priest instead. Interesting, they must have assumed... Hmm, I guess that makes sense if they thought we were um, Death and Taxes, maybe? I don't know, because we don't have Aether Vial. Uh, we will probably march out there, will we like that? What specifically we'll do is we'll go uh, on our turn Chalice and then march, probably. All right, there, Ponder. Let me see if I can... Right, let me just look at the game log real quick. Well, I'm going to pop this out for now. Uh, they did not shuffle off the Ponder, and then they have Snapcaster on Prismatic Ending. All right, so that's going to hit the Timeless Dragon. Hmm. That is a little annoying for us, but it's okay. What we'll do is we'll hit... Oh, they're coming in. Interesting. That is kind of surprising me. I guess they are now the beatdown. Makes sense. Let's start with Chalice... Ooh, I don't want to spend Ancient Tomb's a real liability now, so we can't really do Chalice and March. All right, let's see if March resolves. Let's see if March resolves, and we will hit. Uh, we will hit the Snapcaster. We're, we've chosen Snapcaster because if they have a um. Teferi bouncing Snapcaster back to hand is much better than bouncing Containment Priest back to hand. Okay, and then I don't think we can afford to Wasteland because we can't really use these Ancient Tombs much more. If for the same reason, we can't attack. There was uh, a little there. There was an interest in Wasteland in Scalding Tarn. I don't think it's particularly worth it in this case. Narset, okay, that is a slight issue. Let's see what they get off it. Narset reveals Chase the Mind Sculptor. Interesting. Yep, no attacks. Makes sense. Archon of Amiria is pretty good. We'll play Archon. So now I'm able to attack with Thalia. So we can hit Narset. No, we can't. So they have the Force. Force, Pitching Force. So they do have 
chase on their next turn. We can't cut them off double blue in any way. We're going to play this untapped. Sorry, sorry, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> uh, so what they're going to do probably is they can play Jace, bounce Thalia, attack for us for... So I think what we do is we actually have to attack Narset because what they have is they have play Jace, bounce Thalia anyways. By attacking Narset, we can at least cut them off their cards because they would normally because they already have a way to get in for the damage. That, that, that's a, a risky play. It allows them to uptick a Jace or at least brainstorm, but it, I do believe it is correct. We could Wasteland Tarn. I, I know we said previously we wouldn't, but now we're not really not going to. Yeah, see, so they bounce anyways. Sometimes it's cool. So they bounced us anyway, so it, doesn't, it didn't matter if that would be attacked. So now we need to draw two creatures and be able to cast. We need to draw another creature and be able to cast both of them. So we need Little Thalia, basically. That is not Little Thalia. Uh, so what happens is they we play Thalia, they bounce, we die from Containment Priest. All right, GG's. That'll be the end of that match. And you know what? We're going to move on to match two. But before you do, or before we do, uh, consider liking or subscribe, liking the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out. On to match two. All right, we're back and we won the die roll. This hand doesn't really have any acceleration, so we are going to mulligan it. It just doesn't do anything early enough. This hand has turn one Chalice of the Void, so this is a f easy keep. So we'll keep this, probably put back. I'm looking at Timeless Dragon or Court of Grace. I'm thinking, thinking. It doesn't matter. I think we whatever one we put back, we pitch the other one so we can play Thalia on turn two. Yeah, so we'll pitch this. We'll pitch um, Court of Grace. It doesn't matter. Uh, I guess it's possible. I'd rather have Court of Grace, I guess. Because it's possible we pitch something else. No, it's not. We can't draw anything else. Cast this. We could pitch a Myriad's Call. Then we don't have a guaranteed land drop for Thalia. They're thinking on our, our Chrome Mox at the moment. So uh, this this looks like they have a counter spell, Or they haven't realized we're in game. So game log real quick. Sorry. So we did cast Chrome Mox. Chrome Mox resolves. Port. And we'll start with Chalice on one. Ooh, and it sticks. All right. So this could... There are decks that wouldn't really care. Maybe this could be Prison. Ooh. Not Prison. Uh, we're going to play this. And we are going to pay three. And we're going to play Thalia. It was The Peacekeeper was tempting for a moment. But I'd I think the Thalia just giving us a little bit more insurance. They force that. And what do they pitch? Brainstorm. Okay, force pitching Brainstorm on Thalia. We play planes for turn, and they're fetching island. Okay. Oh, we're against standstill. Hmm. That's not great for us. We need to play everything. Um. Oh, you know what? We're gonna. We're just gonna wait until we draw a uh, timeless dragon. We got plenty of time. Or they play plateau for turn. So we're looking at some form of Jeskai standstill. Mm, we'll play this as a land. No, we would not like to pay. And then the issue is, it would be cool if we had a way to apply pressure against our opponent here. Uh, there's so many tempting things to play, but I don't want to give them the three cards. Like Thalia, Court of Grace, Anointed Peacekeeper are all great. So they're, they're cycling their Timeless Dragon. Fine. I have just basic planes off it. Cool. Okay. What if we go now? What if we go... Like Thalia Archon. Because next turn they get back their 4 4, and that's a new issue. So we're going to go Thalia and Archon. Let's start with the Thalia. Unlike, uh, I know this is technically not the best way to play around Standstill. I, or straight up, this isn't the best way to play against Standstill. But like, we don't have much better. Like, we can't, we don't have any instants or sorceries to play instance on their turn to make them draw at their end step and have to discard to 7. Counterspell. All right, Archon. All right, they had the force pitching force of negation. All right, so then they're going to get a four four, which will become a different issue. So we can go court. They'll become they'll deal four damage to us. Become monarch. We'll draw a card, make a spirit token. We won't be able to get the monarch back for a bit. Oh, they have Jace the Mind Sculptor instead of um, instead of the Archon. That's a different threat entirely. So what we're going to have to do is probably play Annoying Peacekeeper just to make Jace expensive. So we're looking at a Jeskai standstill deck. I'm trying to think. We're probably looking Shark Typhoons, Jace. Okay, so this one we have to break because they just have Jace already. 
Like we can't repeat the standstill once they have. We can't let them just accrue value with Jace. So we'll start with. I mean, we can go Court of Grace now. Better now than any other time. So we're going to do Court of Grace. This will break standstill. If this somehow resolves. Oh, uh, I was hoping they were going to. Sorry, they, they took a long pause. I was hoping they were going to break standstill accidentally without realizing the issue. All right, so now we are Monarch and we're going to make four fours next turn. Okay. And then we can do Peacekeepers to make Chase expensive. We can, we can even do uh, Peacekeeper naming the Timeless Dragon if they don't name it first or if they don't use it now. They did choose to brainstorm this turn. All right, there. I assume they're going to fetch here with Flood Strand, clear the brainstorm. That is exactly what they did. And then they're choosing to cat. This must be the dragon. Oh, no, this. Oh, okay. Hardcast dragon? Hardcast dragon. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, and then standstill. Hmm. Okay. So we make a 4 4 here. Paracas doesn't do anything. We need to break standstill again, is an issue. All right. Yeah, we need to do it because otherwise we're just going to be blocking the dragon while they get to keep brainstorming or, or upticking Jace. That's just not an acceptable way to play this. All right. No only Peacekeeper. So they have Wasteland, Timeless Dragon, Timeless Dragon. Uh, so we're going to name, I think, Timeless Dragon and then Teferi Time Raveler. So that leaves Jace unperturbed. So we're going to name the two Timeless Dragons in hand, make them expensive, and make it so that cycling them is worse. We could name the same creature again. Or, you know, you know, we play Peacekeeper. We name Teferi. That means that Jace has to focus on this stuff. Yeah, so we'll just name Teferi Time Raveler. And then Jace is threatened by all this stuff, so we have a solution for that. Teferi, sorry, Time Raveler. Now we have a board presence. They have a dragon, but like, hopefully we can get past that. Perfect. That doesn't kill this dragon, we can kill another dragon later. Um, attacking or blocking creature. All right, they choose to bounce the angel, that makes sense. Now they can attack with the dragon, deal four to us, or sorry, five to us, and then become the monarch themselves. Now what we can do is we can become monarch, clear Jace. Unless they can play a creature. They can play another dragon if they want. I think what they're trying to do is they're they're trying to plain cycling the dragon, but it costs four now. Oh, Supreme Verdict. Oh, that makes much more sense, actually. Wow, did I just not look at Supreme Verdict in hand? What an odd way to play this game I've chosen. Just playing on a lack of knowledge. Okay, Tarn comes in. Again, we're going to bring in Suppression Field. Like We know that that's going to stop... Uh, I would have expected Saga, but honestly, on four, three colors, they might not be able to play Saga. We know they're running two different Planeswalkers. They're running, I assume, Shark Typhoons. We haven't seen them, but we know they're running Timeless Dragons. So it could make Timeless Dragons cycling more expensive. So we're going to bring in Suppression Fields. Um, probably taking out some removal spells. All right, make our 1-1. One, one. That's not bad. We'll play Archon. That uh, looks like they might have a, a counter spell for this. They are fetching with Tarn, at least. Let's see. Mystic Sanctuary. Oh, no. Oh. Gain back Supreme Verdict. Okay, so you're going to be able to kill the Archon and the Spirit Token. <laughs> um, yeah, we can't take them off, but they have enough man mana of each color. All right. All right, Supreme Verdict coming in. Uh, Can't do anything about that, so now I assume they activate their Planeswalkers. And they can... Bounce, Court of Grace, they sh They do choose to. I was like, they probably shouldn't, but if they have a counter spell, it doesn't matter, right? Like, we can regain the Monarch, but only if it actually resolves. Uh, Wasteland can go after anything, honestly. They choose to take out the Myria, makes sense. Just take out a White Source. Yeah, they're really burying us with card advantage here is the new issue. They're Fate Sealing us. Uh, let's see. So here's the issue. Uh, looks like they chose to keep it on top. The issue is, I think we've probably lost, but I subscribe to the Reed Duke School of Conceding, where you just don't concede until you've really lost. But like, what are we gonna do? Court of Grace. This will probably take a counterspell of some kind. Yep, so that takes a Force of Will. And they're on the uptick Jace plan is the new issue, right? Like these uptick, even we get a fatty down, or a big creature down, uh, Teferi will bounce it on their turn if they have to, or they can just chase bounce it. 
Um, we're we fall quite a bit behind. I think I'm. I think what we're gonna do is we'll concede as soon as they show some sort of threat to win that's damage based, or if we just don't draw anything this turn, right? Like. Uh, I'm going to value their time and my time. We're not going to win if, if we don't try anything good here. We are going to stay optimistic. That's the goal. Okay, expressive iteration from the opponent. Gain a wasteland. This guy hit tomb, right? They have, to, they have to hit tomb in case I have some big thing I have to cast. They actually went after wasteland. That's an interesting one. I wonder why they would hit wasteland. All right, is this something big? All right, and we will concede to a timeless dragon. All right, sideboard time. All right, suppression fields definitely in. Uh, temporary lockdowns don't really do anything. Leyline of the Voids get, like Leylines get timeless dragons. I don't think that's enough for a, to bring a full card for, especially one that like only really works on the Mulligan. Uh, what's coming out though? Palace Jailers again, probably. Like we'll keep Solitudes. Uh, give me one of those back. All right, get rid of a couple Palace Jailers. And yeah, let's go. All right, we would like to play first. Turn one, Chalice. Turn two, Thalia. Keep this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pitch Peacekeeper, actually, just in case we need to do, in case, like, Thalia gets forced. That gives another chance at Thalia. Um, yeah. Uh, Wasteland. Chrome Mox. And this will be Peacekeeper. I wonder if they're, they're thinking of forcing this already. Like they'd previously taken a pretty long pause on our on our first Chromox of the first game. So I wonder if they're doing the same thing here, if they're considering force of willingness. They are considering force of willingness. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. That could be very bad for us. Do they waste the waste? They waste the waste. Interesting. We need to draw lands. We need to draw lands. Our right, opponent plays basic island, passes. Arrakis is good. That's the land. I, I will say that wasn't. What did they even pitch to Force of Will? They pitched to Fairy to Force of Will. Yeah, it's like they have to wasteland here. They know we don't have anything. Or they know we don't have another land as well. Uh, we'll play this uh, untapped. All right, so we, we still have. We're not out of it yet, honestly. Like, we have such a strong curve. If we draw, like, Ancient Tomb, we can just go straight for the Archon. If we don't draw that, we can. If we draw any land, we can play these. Uh, that doesn't do it, but, like, we have a lot more chances still. Like the fact that standstill isn't down yet is why I'm not concerned. All right, we're actually going to go Chalice. There's probably that really wanted to do Thalia, but I think Chalice is better because we are able to cast Thalia next turn if we Chalice. The same is not true the other way around. They have not had to fetch. All right, Teferi, there's going to be bouncing Chalice, I assume. No, it's not. How interesting. Land? That is a land. Mm, I'm thinking, do I want to shock in for Archon? I think no. What we do instead is we play Suppression Field, actually. We're going to say that Teferi is going to be hard to use. If they force this, it's fine, because it's not really part of our plan to actually put on the pressure, right? So now the Teferi is much harder to actually activate, as well as any of their other Planeswalkers or their fetch lands. I think this card is uh, probably underrated. I, I like this card a lot in this deck. I've seen it's been doing some good work in testing. I'm quite happy to have it here. They play Jace the Mind Sculptor. He will do nothing this turn. Uh, this probably has to be... Oh, we can go Peacekeeper. That, ooh, let's do that. I was like, what we can do is we can do Peacekeeper, name either of these, and they basically become impossible to activate entirely. Uh, Pyroclasm does nothing. Prismatic Ending hits something. Engineer Explosives. Yeah, let's just name... Uh, Perry bounces this and draws a card. Jace just bounces it. I think we named Teferi Time Raveler, right? So now this means they have to spend four mana just to bounce this. I'm quite happy with that. Like, they can play one of these spells, or they can activate Teferi and bounce this. Like, they can bounce it with Jace as well if they want to, or pay two mana to use Jace's other abilities. Okay, this looks like Prismatic Ending on Suppression Field. So now Jace is free to activate, Teferi is not. So what they could do now is bounce with Jace, then bounce with Tefer then uh, activate Teferi's ability. Makes most sense to me. That's exactly what they've chosen to do. So they bounce with Jace, and now they have Teferi free to activate. And that is bouncing Chalice. Interesting. Makes sense. What could this be? So they haven't used anything we saw in hand. Oh, sorry, they used Prismac Ending. So they drew blue card. We can't really cast anything. 
But if they haven't drawn blue card, then Court of Grace is very good right now. Let's see, blue, red, white. They only have three colors here. They can't like put engineered explosives on four. I think they're putting on three though. They are putting on three. Okay, so they've chosen to put engineered explosives on three. Ancient Tomb. Does that change anything? No. What we'll do is we'll just go Court of Grace because like Archon of Thalia just gets one of those destroyed, then the other bounced. This puts us ahead, maybe. Yeah, I like this. And this gives us um, literally any of these next turn. We can do Anointed Peace here. We can do Archon. Thalias are always good. Okay. They activate Jace for Brainstorm mode. That's fine by me. So our turn, we're looking at casting some number of these all together. It might be Thalia. We have six man on our turn with the Krakus. So it could be, we'll have a 4 4. We can put in Thalia. They'll, then we have a 2 1 first striker. And your explosive destroys three, th uh, anything with three mana value, right? Yeah, mana value equal to three. So like the ideal thing would be gain down Thalia and like, I guess if we drew Palace Shell, it would be quite good. We just need to be able to dodge this or get rid of it some other way. Okay, opponent passes. We will draw for our turn. Sorry. And our upkeep will make a thing. Uh, this will be Krakus. Here's what we'll do. We'll go Chalice the Void on one. And then we'll go Thalia. Mm, or we could go... Okay, so we can go Archon and force him to use EE. -E. That kills Teferi? Sure. Archon, force him to use EE. -E. And then next turn we can go Thalia, EE, -E, or... Sorry, Thalia, Archon, or Thalia. Noir Peacekeeper. Or even... Um, Annoyed Peacekeeper Archon, if we wish to. I'm feeling pretty good about this, honestly. Like, they have Planeswalkers on board, but, like, Court of Grace can slowly just bury them in an advantage. Like, a 4-4 every turn is nothing to sneeze at. At least forces Jace into a bad position. They get Prismatic Ending. So they could Prismatic End the Archon if they want. They can't hit the Court of Grace. Maybe draw a turn. Draw a card for turn. We also have Solitude available in case they get a big creature out. That would... Cause issues. Like a timeless dragon, actually, is what I was going to say. I'm kind of surprised this isn't... Wait a minute, do they just get rid of their um, prismatic and they put on top via cycling? 100% did. Okay, they choose to bounce Court of Grace. And then I assume activate EE. -E, like that, that's their... That's them using up to fairy. Yeah, that makes sense. They, hmm, they could have got rid of a 4-4. Four -four. I guess they can do that with Chase if they want to. Oh, they have another engineer explosives on zero this time. That doesn't interact. Okay, they choose to activate it. That also gets Chalice. That makes sense. And Brainstorm with Chase. Makes sense. So this turn will probably be uh, Anointed Peacekeeper into Archon of Emeria. If we draw, like, another Ancient Tomb, though, it's going to be Chalice, Anointed Peacekeeper, Archon. They do have a standstill. Interesting. We have to play into that, sadly. We just don't have an option. Do we want to go Court of Grace to play into it? No, let's go let's start with Annoying Peacekeeper. This will at least give us a, in, some info of their hand as well. And we can make a second decision off that if necessary. All right, Force, Force, Pyroclasm, Pyroclasm, Ending, Snapcaster. All right, this is going to name, uh, I guess might as well, you know, for, it's going to name Force of Will. Make that ex more expensive to cast. We don't have a second of these, do we? They, so... God. Now what they do is they, if we need Force of Will, we can get an Archon. Yeah, and then they can't cast two Power Clasms in a turn. Without bouncing something first. Cool, so next turn they, if they want to get their, like, double Pyro Clasm to kill Anointed Peacekeeper, they have to downtick Chase first. Alright, so it looks like they're trying to figure out what they want to do. Um, this could be a Teferi if they drew one. It could be a Prismatic Ending on Archon. Since the Prismatic Ending Archon, now this gives them Brainstorm. Interesting. Interestingly enough, we can almost do Amiria's Call, like actually cast it. Uh, there's probably a Timeless Dragon or something coming in. Uh, I will Solitude a Timeless Dragon, Pitching a Thalia. Oh, that's not that. Okay. So we know they have Forcible in hand. What we could do is, ooh, what we could do is just wait, like, cast Solitude on their end step, 
So you could do like, yeah, so we can do now is we can do Chalice on, oh, let's do Thalia, right? Thalia, and then we have Solitude on the end stop. So if they force this, then we can go uh, Court of Grace again and start accruing that value once more. Cool, that sticks around. That's fine. This gives us Solitude on their end step and to attack the Jace. Ooh, we have a lot of Solitudes. We have a lot of chances of that. So they have the ability to make a... I guess we, with the Jace, we don't really have, know the contents of their hand as well. But they have the ability to make their dragon this turn, if they want. I don't know what this could be. This could be conceivably standstill, and they bounce with Jace. Swords. Okay, swords is fine. And then this should be... Teferi is a different issue. Okay. So we can put in Solitude now. They have to bounce it. Um, that doesn't get us anywhere except for two life less, two less life. All right, let's clear out this to make more space on the screen. So, all right, so we have to assume they still have Force of Will. So what we can do now is we can go Thalia into Solitude, just have them sit them both out there. I think that's going to be the play. You might as well keep uh, Caracas available. So there's Thalia. And we can float out Solitude. Oh, I guess we have to play a for Solitude. We can't have Caracas open. Then we put out Solitude, or we can put out Court of Grace. Let's go for Solitude. Let's say we need something attacking sooner rather than waiting the turn. Yeah, I want Solitude. Sorry, right, I'm just, every now and then I'm thinking, like, is that sure? Am I sure? I'm pretty sure we want Solitude here. Okay, we don't want to exile anything, so we'll just say okay on that one, and then pass. They do the ability to bounce both these creatures. That's the issue here, right? Maybe they gotta stop printing uh, Planeswalker with the bounce effects. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe this is what makes Delver too good. That's facetious, by the way. All right, Snapcaster. I'm sure this will be an issue. Oh, because now they can. What they can do now is they, if they want, they can, like swords, double bounce. So they can do like swords, bounce, take the monarchy. All right, so that's swords probably hitting. I assume Thalia here. That is swords on Thalia as we predicted. Uh, what do we draw for turn? Timeless Dragon. That could. Legitimately, be very useful. Right, like it's basically uncounterable four four. Like it's it dies to a bounce effect though is the other issue. What we could do is on our turn we can solitude. Because right, they're really gonna start running away with the game now if they have a monarchy plus two planeswalkers. Yikes! Becoming a little bit of an issue. Okay, cool. Make sure that that was heard on the mic. Um, yeah. Looking bad. Okay. So, so we have seven mana. We can go Emiria's Call, or we can go like get up to eight, go Solitude, Anoint Peacekeeper. Sure. So we'll do this. We're going to pitch the Emiria's Call. Actually, no, we're going to pitch one Solitude. Because Emiria's Call could still be something useful. And we'll start with the Peacekeeper, and then this will go into Solitude. Okay, they have hard cast force of will. That makes sense. All right, so this will be hard cast solitude. Oh no. Oh no, are they gonna double hard cast force? Yeah, they had 10 mana up, just enough for double hard cast force of will. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Um hmm. Yeah, it's not worth like pitch solitude. Uh next row we can do is we'll have one, two, three. So we, we have nine mana next turn, so we can go like one of our five drops, either the dragon and then Court of Grace. But again, we're running into issues where it's just like they can have any number of answers. But that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go probably Solitude and then into Court of Grace. But like the dragon was a little bit tempting. Solitude's better though, I think, because it will remove the Snapcaster to stop them from getting back the monarchy, even if they bounce it. All right, cool. Uh, starting with Solitude. They could conceivably have another Force of Will here. Wow, looks like they do. Um, hmm. Now here's the question. Do we play Court of Grace? I think we do, right? We want that 1-1 one, one, and then we, we can re... Like, this allows them to gain the mark. So we're not fully reclaiming it. Oh my god. Oh, okay. That's like another Force Will, so that was just Counterspell at least. Um, hmm. Yeah, that was an interesting one. Brainstorm from the opponent. Our brainstorm resolves. 
This will be plain cycling time with dragging to shuffle the library. Makes sense. Revealing a tundra. I'm beginning to think they might have this one. Hmm. That probably takes out Ancient Tomb. Caracas. I feel... So, currently we can, t we can play Amiri's Call. I guess we could have played Amiri's Call either way. This Maybe they think we're going to loop a Legendary. I don't think they have a Legendary we were concerned about or that they need to protect. Mostly because I think they've probably won the round the game already. Another Jace activation. Look at all these counter spells they got. They really... They really got all the card draw they could possibly want, don't they? And Teferi upticks, makes sense. Let's see, no matter what I play, they have Bounce, Bounce, Bounce. They have their Dragon. You know, at least that makes Conceding quicker. Unless we draw, like, a way to actually answer everything on board here. Oh, more than everything on board. All right. Oh, and they have the Monarchy trigger. Okay, let's see what we draw for turn. Wasteland. So, Timeless Dragon... I think our only play is actually the Amiri's Call. And then that just gets bounced, bounced, and then we die. And all right, concede. All right, not, all right. You know what, I'm not going to say now a great showing. That, that second match really showed off the, some of the prison elements. Well, you know what, let's head to match three, see how we do there. All right, back for match three. We are on the play. Uh, this is a turn one Archon of Amiri. We will keep that. Yeah, that's just very good. Turn one Archon backed up by Wasteland. Get a Solitude off it eventually. Start here, Tomb, Mox, and it's debatable what the order of play this is. I don't really care the most, but I think it's such a debatable thing whether or not you want them to see Mox early. All right, and Archon. Now let's see. I guess we're hoping to play against Oops All Spells. Archon kind of shuts that down. Ancient Tomb. Oh no, real quick. I'll basically land your opponent's control enter tapped, so we'll wasteland that bad boy. And then we'll hit hit him for two. Wow, look at the way my entire screen's uh, size just shifted as soon as I went to combat there. Shadow Skull smashing. So this is probably a mono red prism of some kind. So that means we're looking at like Rabble Master on their turn, possibly. In which case, if they play Rabble Master, we will... <sighs> Do we evoke Solitude just so they don't get a 1-1? One -one? Oh, there's just Goblins. Interesting. I'm less concerned now. We can Solitude on my turn. Not, not to be rude to Goblins players. But I'm not scared of them. Right, we'll just cast this, take out the pile driver, and hit him again. All right, then next turn, if we want, we can go chalice to shut down like their one drops, which would be what their lackeys. What are their? I played a bit of goblins. What's, what are their cards? That we're concerned about their one drops is like their lackeys, their skirk prospectors. Because this is like a bigger goblins deck than normal. I think I've seen this list float around, and I've never cared enough to play it. That's, sorry, that came off rude. Is a list I haven't tested out for goblins. I played a good bit of goblins other than this list, but not this one. I'm going to trade um, this. We're, we're the beat down. All right, they, they want to trade Solitude and the Goblin Shaman. That makes sense to me. We'll play the Myria tapped. No, and we will put Chalice on one. Shut off, like, a Skirk Prospector line if they have one. There is an argument to put that on, like, two... But honestly, this might be mono red goblins. Like, they may not have, like, the black splash for munitions expert. Uh, coming in, though, we are bringing in... Okay, so they do have Rabble Master. So this is, like, goblin prison. They have Blood Moon, they have Shadow Shad School Smashing. Okay, so yeah, there's goblin prison of some kind. We would, like, removal for goblin Rabble Master, please. Wasteland. Two, three, four. We have seven mana, so we can play Emiria's Call. Yeah, Amiri's Call. So we'll get two 4-4s, four and then this guy gets indestructible. And then next turn we're attacking for 10. Yeah, this feels strong now. Like, they can make another Rabble Master they want with haste. Or no, they can't do that this turn. They have to wait till next turn. All right, fine. This this match brought to you by Amiria Shattered Skyclave. Goblin Chieftain. Okay, so they're getting everything haste. Is this an actual goblin? It is. Haste and plus one, plus one. Ooh. Okay, the damage output just became a little bit more concerning. Uh, okay. Did I say this match brought to you by Myria Shattered Skyclave? Imagine we had an actual card that does stuff. Um, so this is an 8-3. That one is also an 8-3, so we need to block those. Yeah, we need to block both of those and take them out with the angels, and then we're still going to lose a ton of life. Interesting. We go to 8. Hmm. 
We have another Archon. They attack with... So we, we play th we'll play this. We can't really use um, Ancient Tomb anymore. Uh, by the way, Chalices are coming out. Yeah, Chalices are coming out. We, they aren't going to matter. Uh, Archons will stick in, I guess. Uh, but we're looking at a prison versus prison matchup here, which means that below the things we would normally need aren't as necessary. We'll bring in our removal spells. Oh, cool. Um, we block two things. We take nine, and that's game. Wow. Wow, they really pulled that off with the Rabble Master and the Chieftain. Okay. That's pretty cool on their part. Uh, what's coming in? Not Suppression Field. Maybe we do bring in Temporary Lockdown, though, right? Like... Well, how many creep? Well, you know what? I'm I'm thinking both of these are interesting to me. So let's look at what isn't interesting, right? Chalices are of no use, basically. Palace Chiller is cool. I'm concerned they're gonna. I'm concerned that they would just like beat it naturally. We're gonna keep it in though. I think we can cut probably Court of Grace, right? Like, like they're just gonna beat our Court of Grace naturally by having creatures. Yeah, sure. Let's try it like this. And we're back. Uh, we would like to keep this hand. Sorry, we'd like to start on the play. Uh, this leads us into turn one Thalia. Creatures and non-basic lands. Sure, we'll do turn one Thalia pitching. Yeah, uh, we can do turn one Thalia pitching solitude. And then turn two, we have removal in the form of March of Otherworldly Light. Sure. Uh, this also plays around Blood Moon by using the Chromox. I mean, that wasn't the plan at the time. I wasn't thinking that, but it does do that. Okay, this shuts down. This can shut off some of their better uh, lands by doing this. Like, they, this shuts off their Ancient Tombs for a turn, and they can Wasteland them as necessary. Yeah, that's my Ancient Tomb. So we're going to Wasteland that, like we did previously. Temporary Lockdown is good. Exile each non-land permanent. So that will actually get rid of our Chrome Mox to use, but we will consider that as it comes up. All right, Hidden with Thalia. I guess our best hit, like, the best... Thing that could happen is if they just kept like a super greedy hand and they just don't have the way to, the ability to cast spells anymore. Shadow school smashing tabs makes sense. What do we draw? Peacekeeper, yes, please. So we can make pyrokinesis like impossible to play, it deals four damage, so they can't kill both things. We can make chromox or legion war boss or goblin trash master. We might as well do Legion War Boss, right? Like force them to pitch. They want to cast. They have to Trash Master pitch that. I'm trying to think, like it doesn't do anything to name one of these. Yeah, you know what? Legion War Boss. The other option was the um, the Mox. I just don't think that matters enough. We'll even play Caracas, so we can bounce Thalia as necessary. Okay, and pass to them. I kind of expected it for them to do Pyrokinesis on my end step or something. In order to give them wow just conceded interesting i didn't expect that I, I i thought they really had the ability to claw it back still uh yeah just run it like that again all right we're looking for something that really it's really explosive i just i think they have a lot more explosive potential than this hand does and i don't want to keep this yeah i can throw my weight behind this we're gonna drop hmm, i'm between iconjo and wasteland and i want to keep we're gonna drop iconjo that was incorrect because we have double white cards in hand already. Oh, well, we have planes plus the Chrome Mox. Fine. Ooh, Ancient Tomb, go. Wasteland that, then. If they're going to go for Ancient Tomb, go. I'm, I'm happy with Wasteland. Because we know like they're likely to play something this turn is low. Yep, that's what I thought. And now we can go Thalia. Ooh. We'll go this. This will have to exile probably Amiria's Call. Hmm. It's going to be temporary lockdown. I just don't want to get rid of my lands. We have other outs currently for if they have creatures. Right? If, if necessary, we always have solitude. Did I get like a rabble master or something? Goblin pile driver? Not as um, scary to me. Archon. Love it. Play this. Yes, we will pay three life. Yeah, you know, we're just going to go Archon pass. Like, we're not going to attack. We can trade with that as we need to. Like our goal is now to control the pace of this game. We have the third land. That could be an issue, but hopefully it isn't. Chrome Mox. They can't play another card after that. We need to probably work towards something large. Blood Moon. That's fine. All right, so we're going to go with Palace Jailer. Oh, sorry. It's a little bit... The computer's reacting a little bit slow. We'll do Palace Jailer exiling Pile Driver. And I'm going to leave back... 
I want to leave back something to block. I'm thinking we got to leave back Palace Jailer, or we can leave back Thalia. I think we'll leave back Palace Jailer. Like, sorry, it was going to be Palace Jailer and or Palace Jailer and Thalia, right? Because the goal now is that we can draw a white card for protection off the Monarch. Okay, we did do that. So now we have two forms of removal if necessary. We can either Palace Jailer on our turn, or we can Solitude now. Okay, this will probably be... This will probably be Palace Jailer getting rid of this guy. Ooh. There's no reason not to do uh, this. And value X or less. We could even get rid of... Ooh, I do like getting rid of Fable. Just straight up. Yeah, let's do that, actually. Pass that, and we'll just do this. Oh, wait, wait. Ooh, Thalia issue. Uh, so, this, and then we need to pitch something. But wait. Let's be smart about this and actually untap everything. We would like to get rid of this, the Fable. We're going to need to pitch something to it. Oh, no, no, we don't. We can just... Well, we have to pitch something. We'll just do it in our upkeep, though, instead. Um, we can get rid of the Palace Jailer. I think I'm willing to trade Palace Jailer for this guy. Yeah, they don't want to trade it. That's good by our standards. We'll see what we draw for turn on the Monarch Trigger, and then we can activate the um, March of the Worldly Light. All right, we got another Archon, so... Oh no, I, I didn't have a stop. That's bad. Sorry. We should have done that way earlier. Uh, we will pitch... Uh, we can pitch Palace Jailer. No, we'll pitch Archon. Pass. Uh, we need to adjust this. Just... What? Alright, so mana value... Right, we're going to see if this works, right? So mana cost reduced by 2. We may change the value of X. Click OK to choose this. X is 2. We spent 3... We put three man to X plus is reduced by two. We we had, it costs one extra. You know what? Just just I don't want to lose due to like an issue with that or I don't understand how to cast it. We're gonna let it slide and we're just gonna remove what we have to remove. They pitched two Legion War bosses. Interesting. And they just concede the match. Okay. Well, we had a little bit of a tricky issue with um, March Brother Willie Light there, but we did manage to pull that one out. Let's keep going. See you in match four. All right, on the play for match four. Let's see what we got. So we don't have anything on turn one, but I think we gotta keep it, right? Like we have Caracas, we have the Emiria's Call, we have basically everything we need. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with Emiria's Call here, and then turn two we can go Archon, and then turn three we can go Thalia. Yeah, makes sense to me. I'm glad everyone agrees. Uh, no, we don't want to pay three life, just in case this is an aggressive matchup. I know this player. This player is in a Discord I'm in. No, that's incorrect. This player is a streamer, aren't they? Hmm. They appear to be on elves. Some kind, at least. Okay, so we're going to have to start with Archon. Ooh, that's a good one for the for turn after. Okay, so that's Archon. That'll hold, that stop, that'll slow down their castings, uh, their amount of spells in cast, and should at least stop a uh, cradle or something for a turn. By you. So this could be on the there's like a Fiend Arson deck floating around right now. This could be Grist. That'd be bad for me. It's green Suns for X equals 1. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. So here, here are our options. We can go Court of Grace. Uh, they can attack. They'll have to lose something, but they could get the Monarch. Or we can go Thalia. Can't do both Thalias. We can't do Big Thalia, Little Thalia. We could, so let's do... Let's just throw out a Big Thalia for now. Right, creature, make sure all their creatures enter tap from here on out. Plus first strike's pretty good in this case, and we'll play Caracas. Um, I do think we start attacking already. And I don't think we have the, the, pay, the ability to be patient, really. Okay, give me one moment. Okay, well they have another th Elvish Reclaimer, that's fine, if a little scary. Uh, nothing coming in here, I believe. We can do here, uh, we have four mana. If we want to play Court of Grace, or we can go. Hmm. So we go Court of Grace. We can at least say, "Hey, you have to lose two things." So we can do this. We can go Wasteland Dry Arbor, then play Court of Grace. If they want, they actually get the Court of Grace. They have to lose two different creatures. Now they're gonna. I should have known that would happen. Now uh, that was a misplay on my part. I should have known they could rotate it away, and they actually get Cradle. Okay, uh, we're going to go Court of Grace. Right, like they can trade if they want to lose two of their creatures uh, to 
gain the monarchy that we can then take back through a flyer. Oh, that's fine by me. All right, they want this guy to be a 3-4. Uh, they need to get two lands in the graveyard. And because their fetch lands are coming to tap, that becomes a little bit harder. Ah, Fiend Artisan. Okay, so I was correct. This was a Fiend Artisan list. I hope they realize they can't cast another spell. Ooh. Seiju on the court. Yes, we would like to get another basic. That's a good one. That's a new issue. We also now have three fours. They can take the monarchy. Ooh. Second Viseju. Uh yeah, we have tons of basics to grab. That's fine. I assume they have to come in here. Yeah, yeah they decided to crash in. We can take it out, they kill they kill one, they take it. Yeah, I think we, we're going to double block one of them. They can't kill... Or no, they can kill Thalia. But we'll, we'll see what they kill, and then we can do Thalia, Archon, and Archer. Like, I think it is necessary that we start removing pieces from the board. They choose to kill Archon. That makes sense. And that was also the one we were hoping they kill, because now we can play Thalia into Archon. Ooh, we draw Palace Jailer, actually. We can go... What if we go Thalia into Palace Jailer? That sounds pretty good to me. So then this will be able to put up a double block on an Elvish Reclaimer, and then this will get the Fiend Artisan with the Palace Jailer. We'll also return the Monarch to us. Fiend Artisan down. Right, we have blocks here available as necessary. And then on our next turn, we can go that uh, Archon of Emeria. Okay, and what do we draw for turn? Another Thalia. We kind of kind of got a lot of Thalias, but it's okay. This is acceptable. Yeah, so... Testacular, our opponent here, has a couple of legacy finishes on elves, including a challenge finish about three days ago. And then it's been a little bit since they had a lead. Oh, yeah, they play uh, challenges with elves, appears. So it looks like they are just a straight up elf player. And this is just part of it. All right, they have a uh, elvish visionary there. And let's see. Another fiend arson. A little bit of an issue. And they can go, they might even have another one here, or they could have like another Elvish Visionary. They do not. Okay. Fiend Artisan is an issue. Um, they have. Okay, so we go Archon here. And like this will just pass. I'm trying to think, they have two mana, three mana, they have seven mana, looks like. Hmm, that doesn't really do anything here. Uh, that's. You know, Chalice is going to be pretty good on our next couple matches, next games, though. Our first strike is really helping out us, helping us out here. Like, they're really holding down the fort against, like, the 3-4 and the 3-3. Because their uh, testicular here does not really have many good attacks that are profitable. Well, we do have profitable. If I say we have profitable blocks, I mean we've lost the game. I repeat that. We've lost the game. Um, That looks... <laughs> Yeah, that looks like lethal to me. Might as well try our best to block. Uh, there's nothing we can just straight up kill with first strike, so it doesn't matter. Oh, we want to spread it around. We'll just block like that, and we'll take all the damage. And that should be enough to kill us by far, right? All right, that was enough to kill us. We're at 9, it's 12. Let's look at the sideboard. Ooh, this has to be a temporary lockdown in March of Otherworldly Light matchup, right? Like, those are just perfect cards for this. Like, what's not? Probably Timeless Dragon's a little slow. That doesn't really lock them out, and probably let's cut two Palace Jailers, maybe, and two Court of Grace. All right, this gives us removal. Uh, actually, you know what? Give me those back. Let's cut two Thalias and just say, hey, we know they're not going to be playing uh, many non-creature spells in the low end, so they'll have their mana under them at the point where they are. I like I like the other Thalias. Maybe Solitude is slow, but like I need attackers to finish the game out. Let's say we cut one Court, one Jailer. We want those kind of bigger creatures in still because if we have solid or temporary lockdown, we need to be able to remove their small stuff with temporary lockdown and still have something in play to win. And for us, that's going to be the Court of Graces, hopefully. Uh, we would like to play first. This is like kind of exactly what we want. We want Chalice on turn one, and then we can ramp this out into uh, Court of Grace later. Yeah. Um, and this is going to pitch uh, Solitude probably because this could be. Um, Court of Grace next turn, in which case that's very good for us. Uh, Child's on one hopefully locks them out of their smaller um, and kind of important elves. Uh, if they have Allosaurus Shepherd, obviously doesn't do much though. Oh, I was like, dear God, please don't let this be Allosaurus Shepherd. I don't know if my wee heart could take it. Collector, who've entered the revealed zone. I swear to God, 
It's Allosaurus Shepherd. I'm furious. All right, give me land. Not a land. We will do this. All right. We're going to pitch a court, and we're going to play Archon. We need to hope that for some reason they can't play Oof on their turn. But I'm going to assume they probably can. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so we have one more chance to get Court of Grace in play. That doesn't do it, but does give us an out later to collect your Oof. Sure, start hidden. I might as well start hidden. That gives a lay it out to a later collector roof with pitching a white card. Okay, that's windswept feet he fetches. I'm assuming this has to be a collector roof because like we we've shown that our mana is locked under. Yeah, our mana is so locked under our artifacts that it has to be oof. Hmm. I'm trying to think like maybe what we we're supposed to. Do, oh, I guess we just drew solitude. I was gonna say, but if we had solitude Alsor Shepherd earlier, and I don't think that would have mattered. Uh, we will play this as a land, and this gives us. Next turn we can, um, if we draw a white card, we solitude and then play Court of Grace. If we don't draw a white card, we can um, just draw, we, that means we've drawn a land. We also drew another Chromox or Chalice. I guess those are possibilities. Yeah, the, the, the Allosaur, see, if they didn't have Allosaur Shepherd, this would be very good for us. But Allosaur Shepherd is just so strong. Like, the, the ability to get around all the counter spells that we have, plus the ability to just end the game later on with all the, by being a mana sink. Like you gotta respect it. That's the re in my opinion, Alistor Shepherd at this point is the reason to play elves, is it gives you a good matchup against uh, like Delver. We didn't do anything on our turn, just played the land. Uh let's see what our opponent has. Caracas, interesting. That makes our Thalia's worth. We get to them. Obviously. Which we will. We're not out yet. Okay, what do they have here? This could be natural order. No, green suns for three, that could be grist. It is grist. Uh, sacking to destroy Archon. I assume we're dropping probably the tapped land of war elves. Yeah. Oh no, they went for the Fintorn elves. Interesting. That's interesting that they did uh, the Fintorn elves. Oh no, they sacked Alistar Shepherd because they had a second one. Never mind. Sorry, just the screen shifted around. I thought Fintorn elves was gone. Elvis Reclaimer. We are screwed. All right, like the game has just changed now. Now we need to be able to hard cast Solitude, block something. Like Solitude really needs to take out two things at this point in order to get us back in. Like pitching Core Grace just means that we take out a creature. But like the individual elf creatures and elves aren't a big enough threat that you want to do that. All right, they activate this. We take a good chunk of damage. We're at eight. Can't do that or else we still lose, right? All right, so what we'll do is we will... We will wait, wait, what we can do here? We have two mana here, two mana... We have four mana, we can... Oof, and then Solitude. No, that doesn't really do much. All right, Otherworldly Light, targeting that. Cast it like this, put in the mana, done. Okay, I assume that doesn't change much about our situation. We did have to do that on our turn, though, so they're going to act in response on their turn just to give everything the pump. Uh, we will take a good bit of damage here. This puts us to... What? Two? Three. And wrist activation make a 1-1, one, one. so we need something that actually... We need to draw temporary lockdown. Yeah, temporary lockdown, like, does it for clearing the board of everything. Didn't draw it, though. Um... Let's say we block whatever the base thing is, take gain three. So let's say this is the base thing, right? Let's say this they get this up to its size. We gain three. It's just you know, we'll do it because we'll we'll do it for a very specific reason, which is that um if we get solitude and then temporary lockdown, we can kill like grist with solitude. Possibly. Okay, they choose to find a land. So what we'll do is we'll cast Solitude, exile that, then we'll have uh, four, five, six coming in. Wait, three, four, five, six. All right, six damage coming in. We'll be able to block something, gain three, stabilize it like one. Okay, let's see what the attackers are. Keeping back, oof, interesting. Smart, sorry. Like very smart, but interesting. So cast this, this will exile. Elvish Reclaimer, and we're going to block 
an elf of some kind. Right, because we're taking four here, but we'll gain three. We'll take three, gain three, stay at three. And then I'm having elf as a bigger issue in case that owls or shepherd later compared to like the insects. Cool. So that was, leaves us at three. So now we need to draw temporary lockdown. We temporary lockdown no longer wins the game due to Shriek Ma. I'm only gonna get hands to him. I haven't seen Shriek Ma do that much work before in a bit. And come on, come on, come on, come on. Let me see what I got. I could do it now. Not even seen. Archon will not do it. We will concede to that. All right. So again, we had something that looked good there with the Chalice. Didn't quite pan out. I'll see you again in the final match. Let's see you there. All right. We're back for match five. We are on the uh, draw here, but I think we're going to keep this one. We have a good curve of Chalice of the Void into Palace Jailer later on. If, or sorry, Palace of the, Chalice of the Void into Archon of Emeria. Uh, looks like it might not be fast enough. Unless... Interesting. This is some form of mono black prism. God, I hate this game. Uh, yeah, so we can't cast anything here. We'll wait our turn. Uh, we should have done um, Emiria's Call there. By the way. All right, this is Wasteland? I, played, I just played the wrong land, anyways. Oppo Agent is kind of fine. I was like, we could Wasteland Ancient Tomb. This is my fault. I played the wrong land. That's a, that's a big whoopsie. What we could do now is I could, play, I could spend the mana to play Chromox. Next turn, we can go Palace Jailer. I don't know. I kind of like that play, believe it or not. Yeah, do this pitching Solitude. Might as well pitch Archon. No, nah, it's got to be pitch Solitude. The next turn we go Palace Jailer, Exile, either the Opposition Agent or if they play something thre more threatening, like a Douthy Voidwalker. Uh, I say Douthy Voidwalker. Douthy Voidwalker does not immediately appear more threatening, but there's no way this deck is not Helm of Obedience combo. That's someone who's played a good bit of Helm of Obedience combo. This is Helm of Obedience, like deck. Oh wow, they made the same play we made. Chromox imprinting Ley Line of the Void. Makes sense if you're playing Helm combo. Uh, we do have to play this, we do have to shock it in. White, white. Uh, we don't need to pay life on this one. Black, and then this will be Palace Jailer coming in. Okay. And that'll take rid of, get rid of the Oppo Agent. And then next turn we can go like Archon. Ooh, that's pretty good too. Um, so then, real quick note about this, uh, the list we're playing against here. Uh, normally, in my when I'm playing against Prison, I tend to board out. Ooh. Let's, let's really cut their black mana down. Uh, no, uh, sorry, as I was saying, normally when I play against Prison, I tend to cut out my uh, white lane. Sorry, my Prison elements, right? Because we're in the mirror match, they already have Prison elements. Like, Chalice isn't as good. In this case, I think Chalice is still pretty good. Because, like, three, two? I was going to say, I think Chalice is still good in this case because their way of ramping out cards is not the same way we ramp out cards. We're ramping out cards via our Ancient Tombs or our Chromox. They have Chromox, yes, but they're also relying heavily on Dark Ritual. Like, Dark Ritual is how you do busted starts. This deck might have Shieldred in it. Ooh, Shieldred's bad for us. Uh, we'll trade something here. If they attack, they choose not to attack. Altitude's a good one. Uh, and we have Hardcast Solitude. We also can Wasteland them here. Make sure they can't play anything for a bit. They missed their land drop. This means that they can't, yeah. And this will be Solitude. And now they're, they're two land drops before they can play anything. Or one Ancient Tomb. They recognize that and, and choose to scoop up. Makes sense. Uh, Suppression Field is something I'm considering here. Uh, temporary Lockdown, not so much. Right, so I'm considering Suppression Field because I think they're running Leyline Combo, right? So this shuts down their activations for... Hmm. I'm trying to think, like, what does this stop? Does it stop Helm? No, it just pushes it back a turn. Does it stop Fetch Lands? They aren't playing any. I don't think this really does much, actually. Then the other option is, do we do... I guess it shuts down Karn, if we think they have Karn. Makes Karn hard to use. They, I, I would assume they have Karn, but we can't guarantee it. We can do March for the Worldly Light, but like, what are their threats here? We haven't really seen, like we saw Oppo Agents. Maybe we just leave it as is for now, and try, and then we'll try sideboarding again. Right, like, uh, turn one, Annoying Peacekeeper to Annoying Peacekeeper? Sure. Yeah, I like it. Okay, they just went for a regular Swamp Go. Let's see if we can punish that a little bit. 
This is going to be solid, uh, pitching solid too. Maybe it's not, right? Maybe we go Peacekeeper now, Jailer next turn. Turn after that, we have Solitude. That makes more sense to me, honestly. Peacekeeper. They have Phyrexian Crusaders. First Strike, Pro White and Red. And Sign in Blood. Now that's going to be named Phyrexian Crusader. They don't want to play it for a bit? They don't have to. And then we'll probably, uh, we probably have to play, so they have to Sign in Blood here. And they have Swamp, Cyan Blood. Now they still have Phyrexian Crusaders, which they won't be able to cast for a bit. Uh, what we can do now is we can... Well, we'll have to attack with this. I think, do we want to play Palace Jailer for card advantage? I think we do. Okay. They go to 15. And this will be Palace Jailer coming in just for the card advantage. And we will draw for Monarch. Ooh. This land's good. What could this be? Plague Engineer, that's going to name Human. It doesn't matter because we will solitude it on our turn. I mean, that's good too. <laughs> Fun fact this one, uh, next turn we can uh, use it to kill their Phyrexian Crusaders. They actually get to 5 mana to cast it because next turn we can cycle it and then make a 4 4 Black Dragon. Going for 5, we'll uh, hit him to 12. Okay, and what do we draw? Another Solitude. Pretty cool. Okay, attack with everything. Uh, if they want to flash in like a opposition agent, we will be happy to solitude it. I wonder if I'll ever be tired of being right. The Phyrexian Crusaders will be a bit of an issue in a moment. Uh, they can only play one next turn though. They want to spend five mana on a two two. Uh, I have, I as I was I have, to say, I, have something, I have plenty of things to fly and block it. I don't though. But also like, you know what? Their their life total is low enough that I don't know if it matters too much. Like they can block. Not enough. All right, so three damage. So we can block three most. We hit for eight. Attack with all. all right, like it has first strike. And in fact, it doesn't have lifelink. All right, they choose to block the solitude and they will take lethal damage. All right, first strike. I was like, <laughs> I was terrified. Yep, all right. Uh, so we did win the match. Let's uh, look at the deck list. Talk, see you there. All right, final evaluation on the deck list. Um, it's interesting, because I can't help but compare this to, like, some of the other prison decks. Uh, more specifically, I can't help but compare this to uh, Soldier Stompy, which I played fairly recently, and which was uploaded uh, to the channel. Uh, that deck had, like, a bit of a bigger higher end that was focused on more damage output. What this felt like was that we had a w good way to lock it down, but sometimes we were a little slow in actually winning out the game. Like, we had a few, I feel like we had a few times where we had a lock, we had presence on board and it just wasn't fast enough where the answers in the format were able to clear out what we had and then we lost from there um, cards i really liked chalice was very good like i'm not saying this is a bad deck i think that like i this is a deck from a 5-0 list from a uh, zigabadi i'm just saying maybe not everything here like best cards here archon of amiria was great uh anointed peace gear actually felt very good when we got it solitude who knew force of who knew swords to plastures was good everyone like there's a lot of cards here that are good. I don't know if Timeless Dragon is good enough, honestly. I I understand why this is here, right? This is uncounterable when you eternalize it. It's uh, if it's not in a blue matchup, you have a way to play it twice. It, it can be a plain cycling card, but it just it feels so slow. I don't know if this is a legacy card. I've seen it like unless you have some other thing you're doing that's unfair with this, like this getting through your standstills, right? Like we saw the standstill deck that had a lot of the same cards as us, but they're able to utilize them better, right? Their, their Timeless Dragon paired with standstill was better than anything we were doing with Timeless Dragon. Overall, I like the deck list a lot. I actually thought it was really fun. I'd love to play more prison decks. Um, I'm actually kind of more interested in... I like that mono black prison deck we played against in the end. But um, I'd love to play more of this. Um, if you got this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. Uh, consider liking or subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot. It doesn't cost anything to you. Uh, thank you very much. Peace.